All right, guys. Back for another week. Welcome to Speak the Fuck Up. You know it's time to speak the fuck up. First and foremost, we want to say thank you to all of you listening out there on YouTube. We really appreciate you. You guys have been reaching out into the, the DMs of our man right here, Pete, letting him know. Good DMs, though. Let me clear that shit up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good DMs. He <laughs> shares shit with us. Thank you. And yeah, yeah no, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. seriously. Yeah. Hell no. Nah. That's why that's why I had to clear that shit up. You get a phone call real quick. I know, right? And you guys have been giving us so much feedback and we really appreciate that. So we give you guys a, a, a round of applause because without you, you all, we are absolutely yes, nothing. Indeed. And you know who you're here with? It's your guy Joe here with Pete and Griff. Gentlemen, another week. Another, another week. week. Another week. How's shit been? Good. Man, I've been trying to get that blue check verified from Instagram. <laughs> he told me that shit earlier. <laughs> <Blue notes. laughs> I was like, I'm so far from that shit. <laughs> he said he's applied three times. God. Four. He, four. He <laughs> denied 60, me all four times. There's a 60-day waiting period before you I try again? So. I think it's 60 days. Pete is oh, on shit, it. Hey, man. they're gonna. somebody's going to click yes one day. One hey, day. Somebody's going to click yes. Yep. Yeah. Always. I didn't even know you could request that. I thought that you just. Yeah. It just happens. I yeah, stumbled I upon it, it and I was like, get verified. Oh, shit. Like, what? All right. Give me that blue check. What does it take to get verified? I don't know. They sent like they sent me a response as to why I got denied, mm. and then followed it up with like four or five bullet points. You don't remember it, not one bullet point? Nah, I saw I saw denied, and I was like, "Fuck you!" I'll be back. In, <laughs> I'll, I'll be back in sixty days. How's your week been? I just want to be official. You are, man, Pete, you, are official. you are official, brother. No. Oh, thanks, you don't need there a blue go. check Appreciate for verification. You're right. Yeah, just you're right. To let you know how important you are. I don't need some are. damn app to tell me I'm. More Legit. or less important. That's right. <laughs> right. That's 100%. Yeah. Shit. We still want that shit, though. I know. <laughs> it just makes your profile look so much cooler. I know. And then, I, like, I, I heard the the outlay of it looks totally different than just a peasant. Oh, really? Yeah, than a peasant Instagram that we're all currently <laughs> yeah, on right I'm now. on that peasant shit. Yeah, we are. I heard, like, you get, like, if you have a verified account, there's messages that come in from verified accounts that go to a separate box. Oh, cool. And then if you're just on the peasant account, it's just everything together. No so, shit. You know, yeah, man. Do we know anybody that works for Instagram? Probably. We probably do. I'm, I'm not official enough, so I don't know yeah, nobody right. like that. Oh, damn. We probably do. We do know people, though. Yeah. And, well, we know people that are verified. Yeah. Pete, yeah. how's your week? A oh, week? Same, same. Same. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hospital. Yeah, you know, yeah. hospital. Same, same. Same, same. Yeah. Hospital, like Groundhog right. Day? Yeah. You know. Groundhog Day. Nothing, nothing, nothing important. Yeah. It's a good movie, by the way. Same. No? Yeah. Groundhog Day is pretty funny. It just, right it just puts things into perspective. Yeah. Like, you see that shit day in, day out. I was joking. With, well, I was joking with that. It's funny, but it's not funny. But I was like, at this point, I feel like the Grim Reaper is just chilling mm. on the unit. For real? Yeah. Damn. Just waiting, playing cards with. With, with who? With, with an angel. I don't know. What? <laughs> what game are they playing? Definitely go, go fish. fish. Go <laughs> Definitely go yep. fish. Go fish. Like, have y'all seen that picture where you have like a, it's, it's like a, an old man or an old gentleman in a hospital bed, and then one side is an angel, and the other side is like the angel of death, and they're just playing cards over the body. No, I have not seen yeah, that. Man, that's crazy. Damn, that that's cool. bad. Yeah. You, that oh, you felt bad about that joke. <laughs> go fish. Yeah. I, don't feel bad about it. We oh, all die. Fuck it. We, we do. Yeah, it's, it's we a do. Joke. It's a joke, y'all. Come on. I'm not that much of a dickhead. I, mean, I respect that. I <laughs> I've respect said a lot that. of shit on, yeah. on my other, on the old one. So I, you know, I ain't got no filter. Yeah. How's your week? Uh, good. Had a little vacation with the New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the Saints. They they won. I'm not they a Saints did. fan, but oh, okay. I got friends that are Saints fans. So did you go to the game? Uh, oh wait, no, 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 nobody went to no. the game. What am I talking about? No, no, no some no. stadiums. They had a limited amount of fans, so I take that back. Yeah, the stadium was. It was weird, man, driving by the stadium while the game was going. There's no traffic. You know, mm -hmm. there's not not a lot of hoopla going on. Yeah. Everybody's watching the game at their house or something like that. So yeah. I ended up going to a little uh, get-together with one of my boys, his frat brothers. Had to, you know, projector up on the, the wall and, you know, watching the game with drinks and pizza and stuff like that. It was oh, real yeah. cool, man. Real it fun. It was real cool, yeah. Chill, lay back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was a good game, too. It was fun like to that. watch Tom Brady get his ass whooped. <laughs> It's always fun to me. <laughs> I mean, he was playing on. Y'all be doing that shit and be forgetting. Like he's still Tom Brady. I know. And he, he's still Tom Brady. And. Come on, he's got a whole new cast, a whole new clique. First, and. first, you know, first time in twenty years. I'm gonna I'm jump on the bandwagon of people that were saying, "Well, so that it goes to prove it was all Bill. It was all Bill Belichick." I'm 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 gonna roll with that. I'm gonna I'm, wait. I'm it's just the that. first game. I don't like New England. I don't like I don't like Bill Belichick. I don't like Tom Brady. So yeah. I'm just gonna hate either way. 
It don't matter what you say. I'm just gonna hate. It's a damn shame. How was your week? And also, I'm a Cowboys fan. So yeah. Oh well. Yeah, know, Cowboys fan. Exactly. I, I gotta yeah. agree with you right so. there. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm converting into a Cowboys fan. Is that all right, guys? Do you that guys accept me? I will accept you, brother. I've he, always accepted you. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Feelings. Oh, I hate him. I fucking hate him. No, my week's been chill. Um, a lot of shit, a lot of training, a lot of yelling. Um, yeah, I don't know. Nothing exciting has gone on. Uh, yeah, it's another week, like Groundhog Day. Yeah, yeah every yeah. day, wake up the same, do the shit, and, and go over. I'm with the shits. Does man, does that speak to how like mundane we just take our days for? Like we we're saying, like re, you know how you reiterate the fact of reaching out to people. And, you know, talking to people you haven't talked to yet, we sit here and we're talking about, you know, same old day. Mm. <laughs> same old fucking day. Same. What's the phrase? Another day, same. What? Another day, another dollar. No, not that one. Oh, damn. Uh, different day, same shit. Someone I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Same shit, different day. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Same shit, different day. That sounds like a song title. Probably is. <laughs> Probably Come on. Nice All, everything song. we say. Come on. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of song, y'all, why did y'all hate the song WAP? I love that song. Don't don't bring that up. <laughs> don't bring that fucking song. That shows y'all's age. <laughs> hey, I never said I didn't like it. I could have swore I we did. were in the group text and y'all were talking about how y'all just don't like WAP. I fucking nah. hate that song. Where, where did you see this in the group text? Maybe it was him. I'm about I thought, to say it was I probably me just it. overtaking yeah, that whole me. shit. It wasn't me. I mean, I'm not off on a rant. Not, I, you know, on, and on the cool, I haven't heard the whole song in its entirety. I have. I thought she's very creative. Cardi B, shout that, out to you, that's girl. That's a good word. Shout out to Cardi B. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? She's getting divorced. Pizza. Shout out to Cardi Speaking B. Speaking of which. Yeah, what? Uh, what was that one um, message? Oh, uh, how is, why is. Um, was it in the group text? Yeah. Which one? Which? How, how um, everybody's giving offset all that Grief and grief and letting Jada slide. Yeah, yeah. Was Jada, living his best. Life. I mean, mm-hmm. Jada Jada got a slide because her and Will alluded to them having an open marriage, or that's how people interpreted it. Cardi and Offset never said that that's, they had an true. open marriage to be able to do shit like that. Well, that song fucking suggests they got something. <laughs> it was a lot of jokes they going down. A lot of shit. It was a lot of jokes going down because she said, "I don't cook, I don't clean." <laughs> <laughs> I still got that ring, mm. and then. People was killing that joke. I'm, a, I did. I chuckle at it. I was like, as a divorced man, I was like, hmm, hmm. damn. Like, you know, you don't want to see anybody who has a family together like split like that. Like, who take? If you take joy in watching somebody's family split right. up, like you, yeah. are, you're just come on, something get out of here. Yeah, something wrong with you. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't care. There you go. I, it's a, there's a whole another, a whole another thing. Like how we talked about Jada and Will's entanglement and these two getting divorced. Like, I don't give a fuck, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Motherfuckers get divorced every day. Next. Well, it's just because they're so high profile. I don't, still don't give a right. fuck, dog. And at the same time, good. we don't know what's going on behind. Good, yeah, right. and you know, yeah, they're high profile. So you raggedy Sue over there who thinks that you're just all this shit. Yeah, your husband could cheat on you too. If she's getting cheated on. You're definitely getting cheated on. And guess what? It's none of your damn business. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> that was rude, huh? The truth hurts. Yeah, it's Mo- what it is. Yeah, it fucking happens. Speak the fuck up. No matter how hot you think you are or how Tell much money truth. you think you got, if somebody wants to cheat on you, they're gonna cheat they on you. Cheat. Straight up. And love is a choice. Love. There you go. So is cheating. I was about to say, sure so is sucking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. Oh, you digress. Let's all digress. All right, what the fuck's going on this week, man? Everybody that's been reaching out to us, once again, got to say thank you again. Yeah, uh, really man. appreciate it. Yeah. The interaction keeps us going. It makes our week interesting. Hell yeah, it does. Um, what was the topic? Uh, I know we wanted to cover something um, we had a gentleman like chime in and asking us about uh, yeah. just general questions about happiness, correct? Mm. Happiness being a mindset versus a fleeting feeling. Mm. How'd y'all feel about that question, first of all, when you first read it? <sighs> I had to think about it. Because um, I think happiness also, like love, is a choice, right? You can choose to be happy or you can choose to be miserable, right? Whatever you find happiness in, you can hold on to that or you can just throw that shit away. Just be a miserable ass motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I've been on both sides of that. I chose to be happy and I chose to not be happy. You know what I mean? So, like I said, it's a choice. It's a choice. Joy, on the other hand, that's that's. So happiness and joy aren't the same thing. I don't, I don't, I don't think they are. I don't think they are. What? No. What is joy? Mm. I think joy has a deeper meaning. Yeah, in my opinion. I posted something that Simon Sinek broke down. Um, that was really interesting and it came at the right opportune moment because we had thought about discussing this topic this week. Mm-hmm. I think he said like happiness is something 
like you get a you get you get a good grade on your test or you win the lottery the numbers of your lottery pops up and you're happy and then it, it disappears mm. and joy has a deeper meaning like there's more behind it it's like it's, it feels <laughs> it's like you like you're a part of something um something bigger yeah you know and so you end up loving it mm -hmm. and it's like the expectation of us making every day happy like is it possible to be happy every day no that's an unrealistic expectation right shouldn't live with that expectation that you have to no. be happy every right. single goddamn day I think that'll make you miserable. Yeah. yeah. Especially when we see things on social media that tell me I'm supposed to be happy all the time. Right. I'm supposed to be positive all the time. Yeah. Hell no. Nah. Fuck that shit. You are human. Absolutely. Yeah. Feel those emotions. Yeah. yeah. Cry that shit out. Get mad. Yeah. Don't hit anybody. Do other things. Like, you know, you're allowed to feel those emotions. Don't try to mask them. Or try to mask in every emotion over with happiness will eventually wear you out. Like, I think I'm guilty of that personally. Yeah. So, like, when he sent that message in and I was reading it, I was, I've was i been thinking all week, I don't even know how to fucking answer this shit. Yeah. To be completely honest, because I'm someone who tries to only feel happiness. I hate being mad. I dislike being sad. Because when I... So, I'll, I'll give you an example. When we have, um, like, a death in the family or anything like that, I hate that feeling so much that it like being sad and having to cry because it, it makes me feel physically ill. So it's like, I, I avoid it. So it's been, like I said, it's been issues where um, I avoid certain emotions. Like, no, nah, I don't, no, nah, no, nope, no. Nope. If it's not making me laugh or smile, I don't, I don't want to deal with it because right. of how it makes me feel physically. Right. And, and then it plays into my mental and doing things like that. So when I'm going through something like that, it gets, it gets heavy for me. I'm just yeah. like, shit, I, I hate this. This is why I avoid stuff like this, and this is it, it's just off the road. So, when when I was asking if there's a difference between happiness and joy, I guess I guess I get it now, and I can differentiate the two. Um, but when he asked that question, I was like, man, I don't I don't know what to tell you, man. Mm. I don't know what to tell you just based off of my experience because I try to, like I said, avoid all that shit. But I think that alludes to what you said. What you just said, as far as you hate feeling sad, mm -hmm. and you you try to find things that make you laugh or smile. So laughing and smile are, are, are measurable. Like, you can feel it. Genuine laughing, genuine smiling right. versus happiness being a mindset. Like, you can, you can wake up every single morning and be like, I'm going to be happy today. And that's, not un that's unrealistic because right. based on your environment, based on your situation, based on the things that happen during the day, yeah, um, can play a huge factor. So it's circumstantial. Happiness is circumstantial. Right. It's an emotion. So that's what I've said. I've spoken to several people before, and I was like, dude, find things or do things that make you smile, that make you laugh. Put yourself into that situation. Um, Simon can, you know, went on to in that video, and he was like, you don't have to like work every day. It's almost like you get to love it. And if that's something that you don't see yourself doing, then perhaps you are in the wrong mm. job. Right. Right, and he's like, you don't have to like your kids every day, but you love them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like you love them, mother. yeah. Yo, that makes you feel so terrible as a person. We're like, damn, hey, this kid, <laughs> love this kid, but just getting on my fucking nerves right now. Yeah, <laughs> that, is, that makes you feel bad. <laughs> Hell yeah, because I feel like I feel like they put it out there like you're supposed to like your kids all the time. No, you're not. <laughs> That's unreal. <laughs> kids can get on your fucking nerves, and sometimes adults do too. Lily. She do it on purpose. Yeah. I'm calling her out. Yeah, Lily. I know you probably don't watch this, but that's a <laughs> You probably, that's probably don't really watch this. Yeah. <laughs> but Lily, she... She be getting at you? She, she know what button. She be like, all right, I'll see what daddy doing. Let me see if I can get on his nerves today. You know, and she'll push that button. I'm like, God, my, uh, it's, it's annoying, man, but... Yeah. They're kids. Yeah. You know, to them, it may be a game. Yeah. They're sitting there miserable about to freaking <laughs> go cry and scream in the back right. room. And they freaking laughing, thinking it's a game. Oh, you know I mean? God they're dang. <laughs> they're kids. I don't feel bad. I'm human. You uh, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I know how to push buttons, too. So yeah. You know what I mean? So, so let, me, let me ask y'all this, then. Do you feel like people are more depressed nowadays than the past? I think... Um, yes. You think yes? I definitely think so. I think there's... You said depressed more nowadays? Yeah. I think because we see things so frequently and... I think depression has been such a big topic that more people take it on and then they associate themselves or their ill feelings with, oh, I'm depressed mm -hmm. without actually, you know, self-diagnosis, yeah. you know, without actually going and being, you know, 
clinically declared, you know, into depression. I feel like everyone has kind of deemed, you know, a part of their life or a part of being sad or a way that they feel uh, based on depression. Now, I believe that people do come in and out of depressive states depending on what is going on. And that's just that's just a natural thing. You know, I, I feel if things aren't always thing like we in life, things aren't always going to go the way that you're going to go. Yeah. Um, the way that you want them to go. Excuse me. So I feel like we move out of depressive states depending on who you are. Some people uh, rather quickly than others. That some people get in a depressive state and they wallow in it, and it's not. I feel like it's not necessarily by choice. Right. Like sometimes, I, hey, I just can't shake this right now. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to allow yourself time to be able to move away from whatever is depressing you, or or if there's other factors from there, get, you know, get help in that end. But you know, some people just sit in it and sit in it depending on situations. I know. Shit. Fuck. God, I didn't want to drop a bomb. Fuck, I'm not going to drop it right now. I was probably depressed for a good, probably for a good two years straight. Mm. I went around. I was laughing with my friends, joking with my friends, um, worked in the gym, was working out. Um, that was actually one of my biggest motivations for, like, mm. working out and getting, like, super cut up. I was like, I'm finna yeah. get these bitches. <laughs> that, that's, that's what was on my mind. Was it after a breakup? Uh, um, uh, no, nah, it was in the middle of a tumultuous part of my marriage that um, ended up in divorce. So I was I was probably divorced for, like, two years straight uh, just based off of some shit. And um, Breakups make bodybuilders. Yeah, they, yeah they do they do i'm on the same freaking page yeah, yeah. but i can say i can say i and i didn't um that's so when i started competing i was when you after a breakup well i mean i, I i've always worked out before but i got more serious, serious after right yeah. yeah same shit yeah. <laughs> see so i can say because my divorce probably wasn't until um two years from that point and i went to i went to therapy i went to counseling and um he said, he told me, like, one of the best days I ever came out of there, he said, pain is inevitable. Misery is a choice. Ooh. Yeah. So you can choose to be miserable, um, but, you know, pain. You're going to feel pain, you but feel you that. can. But now misery, now you're deciding to stick and, and be in misery. And that was one. After that after that session, I came out, I was like, I feel good. And then two or three days later, I was like, fuck. Yeah. I'm back in this bitch. So, yeah, yeah man. It took a while before I even actually stepped on stage. Like, mm -hmm. even, like, get, becoming more serious about my working out and making it more intentional versus just going through the movements and training or whatever. I talked about stepping on stage for the longest time, but I don't think I even stepped on stage until, like, years later. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. I, I did the same shit. Yeah. Like, I wanted to compete while I was still in, uh, still active duty mm -hmm. in the Marine Corps or whatever, but, like, stuff happened, you know, this would come up, whatever, whatever. And I, you know, wanted to do it for like two years and it just didn't happen. Yeah. So after I got the Marine Corps and during my divorce, right, my focus, I, I found I wanted to find a way to not think about that. You know what I mean? And not think about being depressed. So my outlet was working out. And then I got more and more serious and focused on, you know, competing, you know, posing and how to pick the right freaking briefs to wear, like how to hit certain angles when you do whatever workout, whatever exercises, accessories, yeah. all that stuff. I clouded my mind with that. You know what I mean? To to block out the depression. The right. You know what I mean? And I yeah. think also, too, culturally, I'll, I'll speak for my culture, for, for black people. For the longest time, depression was something that was like, no, you're not depressed. We'll you, you're not allowed to be depressed you're if you're black yeah, in our community. Right. We'll figure it out. We'll go to Jesus. We'll go to a religion. We'll yeah. go to, you know, go talk to your grandmama or some, you know, shit like but that's that. how it is with like, Asians too, though. Like we don't go to our parents. One, we definitely can't go to our parents because they'd be like, suck it up. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I was your age. Right. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm working yeah. three like, jobs. Asians don't your do emotions, man. Yeah. yeah. Like, like I'm, yeah. there's something wrong with me, y'all. Like, <laughs> I need to go see somebody. Yeah. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Let's pray about it. Yeah. I grew up when my dad was like, no, men don't cry. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was a balling ass little boy. I, <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in a single parent household. Baby, now. <laughs> no, oh man, I, I remember one time this girl <laughs> broke up with me in sixth grade. Sierra, <laughs> Damn. I still remember your name. <laughs> this, oh my god, this is probably why I have an, an unhealthy attachment to food when I'm sad. So, <laughs> my mom. My mom, like, Sierra called me on the phone, you know, it was the Corley, hey, you know, it was blah, blah, blah. And she said, like, she don't want to be my girlfriend no more. And I was like, damn, I'm like, all right. And, you know, hung up the phone, started crying. And my mom was like, you are asking me. Sierra just broke up with me. <laughs> <laughs> Sierra had a fat old booty, too. <laughs> 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 I 
In sixth grade. Yeah, boy. <laughs> I'm talking stacked. Okay. That, I, I, that thing now probably really wagging, dragging, all right? So she broke up with me, and my mom was like, you, you, like, you want to go get some food? Yes. Yeah, so we, uh, there's a barbecue place in um, in Aurora, Colorado uh, named Shed's Barbecue. I think it's gone now. So we went to Shed's, and then we went to, to like, my, my favorite Chinese food restaurant, too. So I had barbecue. I had brisket, ribs, french fries. My mama got me lo mein and oh everything, God. too. And I think that's why I have an unhealthy attachment with food. Like when I'm sad, like when I'm sad, I'll sit there and eat. Like my my um my sad food is pizza. Like what's wow. up? I'm ordering pizza. Mm. Yeah, comfort uh, food. Pepperoni pizza. Yeah. yeah, yes, comfort food. So, <laughs> oh shit, touching on that shit from a kid. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's one. Yeah. Do y'all feel oh, like yeah. social media plays a huge role in people's depression nowadays? Hell yeah, huge. Yeah, fucking social media bullies, all that stuff. Especially when you get a rejection letter from Instagram saying, oh, "Not me." God damn it. <laughs> 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 I'm still stuck on it. Freaking Instagram. <laughs> but anyway, going it back. I mean, w- if you think about it, people go to sleep and the last thing they see is their phone. Mm-hmm. For the most part, I'm not saying everybody, but for the most part. Yeah. And the first thing you, the first thing you wake up to, you pick up the phone and you're looking at it. That's sad. I do that shit at four right? o'clock in the morning. And so, if you think about notifications, it's like a clickbait. Yeah. You get a notification, you look at it. And, and then you continue to scroll through it and you see and you have no choice in what you're looking at on your feed, right? Unless you filter your feeds. Right. But who's, who, who actually who's goes through that? and filters well, their feed? I started telling you because, okay, you, you know, when you go to the discovery page, like on my discovery page, you know, they're doing those real videos now. Now it's just girls on my page with just their asses out and yeah. shit like that. And I started going and like, nah, I don't want to see this. Not interested because I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing ass photos and ass videos. And I would like to inform every worker or girl out there that does like an RDL or some shit like that. You don't have to spread your fucking ass cheeks apart to do a fucking Romanian deadlift. You better talk to him, Joe. When you're lying on the bench or lying on the hamstring curl machine and you're curling your fucking hamstrings, you don't have to open your ass cheeks up every single fucking time. Let me, I I mean, am I the only guy seeing that? You are not. In workout angles, you know you can take workout angles from the side and from the front as well. It doesn't just have to be your pulse steer your chain sweetheart damn it tell them god i'm like i'm sick of the shit it's the truth like y'all are making ass not even fun to look at because it's so it's so (laughs) available played out it's played out it's It's everywhere but it's everywhere so so i don't know if anyone has gotten the chance to watch uh social dilemma no oh i got that say i haven't watched it i was watching it yesterday on netflix and the way they broke it down for you from like all these big time big wigs that used to work for like google and twitter and you know all these social media apps and they're like, man, there's algorithms, there's mm-hmm. there's things that they analyze, they look into. That's why that's why a lot of time whenever you say something or like a particular item, all of a sudden it pops, pops up on your screen the moment you yeah. pull up your app and stuff. They study your algorithm. They, ac- they, they can actually see how long you look at a picture, the same type of pictures. And so whenever you go to your Explorer page, those are the, the typical Ooh. types of pictures that pull up. Well, then let me clear that up because I'm not <laughs> running around looking at booty pics. <laughs> Because most of my explore page is football. It's like football shit. Yeah. I'm looking at football, looking at sports. Well, no, just not, it's not just that, but at the same time, they look at your profile. They see the time, the type of things that you post in your stories. I mean, mm. there's a lot that goes into play. Fitness. We're, we're yeah, fit, like yeah, I said, fitness. Yeah. We're Most of those ass pictures that are popping up are from fitness, fitness influencers yeah, or Man, whatever. Filter anyways, that shit to my right? burner account. Like, put some ass <laughs> on my burner account. Like, fuck. Yeah. But, I mean, but... You go into it, so you look at you look at social media, and, er, and for the most part, folks are going to be posting their highlight reels, anyways. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very rare. Do you ever see anyone post behind the scenes, the struggles, or whatnot? Mm-hmm. And, and if they do, it's from time to time. Yeah, but for the most part, it's usually success and the accolades, rightfully so, because who doesn't want to brag about their success or whatnot? They should. Yeah. But I'm saying you're looking at that and you start comparing it to yourself, and it's like, man, I'm not where they are. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm comparing their chapter 20 to my chapter one. Yeah, yeah. you can't do that, especially for those yeah. that just started in any particular thing, and so they start mm-hmm. following mm-hmm. those that are in that industry. So let's say for someone, for example, for for a young person or any individual, let's say they started doing bodybuilding, they just got into it. Right. Well, they're gonna start looking up, you know, bodybuilders that have been doing this for a while yeah. that have a particular physique that they're trying to go after. And now they're saying, man, I've been doing this for this amount of time and I'm nowhere close to where they are. We're not, dude, yeah. you don't understand how long these guys have been doing. You yeah. don't know what else they're doing behind the scenes because they're not posting about it. Yeah. You no, know? And then we start comparing relationships because you see people that post, you know, relationship stuff. Let's be honest. Let's be real. Relationships have their struggle. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. They're not going to post about their relationship struggles. I mean, they shouldn't. It's, like, it's almost like airing out their dirty laundry yeah. and whatnot. Keep that between your, your significant other. But at the same time, you're not going to see that to where you'd be like, oh, okay, I, I can relate to that because my relationship is going through that same struggle too, mm-hmm. right? 
So we start comparing it. And that's when we start affecting our, our process, the way we think, because our brain is very vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's always analyzing everything. You remember your mind records what the eye sees. And mm-hmm. so when you're staring at your screen over and over and over and over, and let's be real, you go through one social media app, you're gonna go to another one, and then you're gonna go to the next one. So you got, what, Instagram, then you got Twitter, and you, you're spending countless time on it. And then you got Snapchat, and then you got, for those that still use Facebook, you got Facebook. And then once you're done with that, you're more sometimes l- looping back. Oh, well, let's see what I missed in the yeah. last 45 minutes since I've been on Instagram. Oh, no. Now you're starting over. Mm-hmm. You're going through stories and whatnot. And so a lot of times people could be in bed by 11 p.m., but don't fall asleep until 2 a.m. because oh, they're going shit. through social media. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, man, it's just crazy. It's crazy when you think about it. And that's the last thing you put down. And now your brain is processing that while you're going to sleep. Yeah. And you wake up, what do you do? Pick up your phone and see what notifications you have. And I remember Social yeah. Dilemma was saying that's when they created tagging each other. You can tag me, I can tag you, and start tagging each other, and it's back and forth. You continue to tag each other, so it's a nonstop process. Yeah. So now you're in your headspace. Mm. That's another thing. We're in our headspace all the time. All the time. How often are we looking at the screen? We're staring at the screen. If you're working, you're looking at your screen for hours. And now that kids are doing virtual classes, right. screen time for work, for personal reasons and whatnot, so you're caught in your headspace. Folks, if you find yourself caught in that headspace, do something physical. Come train with us. Absolutely. Yes. Here's a shameless plug, F45. Dallas Arena, Odie's Dallas. Oh, All right, anyways, physical movement brings you down. It keeps you grounded. Because again, we're in our headspace for the most part. So when you do something physical, whether it's lifting heavy weights, going for a jog, going for a run, that's why you hear about runner's high. Mm-hmm. When you go and to do any type of training, you may start off slow or sluggish, but it's by the time you're done with your workout, you're like, damn, I needed that. Yeah. Because you're not grounded. You brought yourself back down to physical like, earth. Yeah. Instead of being caught in the clouds. Yeah. Whew. <sighs> <laughs> no, I'm sad. I'm not really sad. I actually had two sexes on the beaches. Sexes on the beaches. I was about to say, what? I had two sex on the beach before I came, you know, came to the studio. Got to keep it going. I keep it jumping you. for the Thursday. <laughs> Y'all didn't bring me my umbrella drink like the people requested, so what's Look, up? man, okay, so for those that caught the uh, the poll, I posted, should we bring Joe a pumpkin spice latte <laughs> or a fruity umbrella drink? I had 100%. How many people voted? I didn't look at that. Oh, okay. But I had the I had to pull it for a little bit, but then I started noticing that it's a hundred percent fruity Should've umbrella drink. I took it down because I was like, man, what if I can't bring him a fruity <laughs> umbrella drink, man? <laughs> so I took it. I took that pull down. And I was like, by the time I get it to Joe, It'd it's be gonna water. be like all watered down. I would just like to say thank you to the people out there for voting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was hoping they go a pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> so I just run the start. It's easier to get. Yeah. Yeah, it is pumpkin season. I'm loving that shit. Girls, get them Uggs on. What are y'all doing? I haven't seen any Uggs yet. What the fuck? <laughs> We're damn near in October and y'all haven't put any Uggs on. I'm a little disappointed. It's too hot in Texas for that shit. Yeah. Oh, I guess that is true, yeah, too, until after Halloween. Feet, feet be stinking and shit. No, you know. I mean, they're going to sweat anyways. But I guess in, in like, lambskin and shit, you're really going to be 90 fucking... degrees. So yeah. do, you, do you hate Uggs because Brady is one of their... Didn't know their that. Celebrity endorse. Nope. I hate them even more now. That's why I enjoy Uggs, because Brady let me know that they're for men. (laughs) Brady's a man's man, all right? Underdog, came from the top. Shit. Man, busting back to the the happiness, though, in in social media, it it does play a look in it, because you, like you said, you... um, you see the the lifestyles that you want to get to, or if you're in a like like you're in a certain profession, right. and like you said, bodybuilding, or whether if it's media or something that you like to do, and you're seeing the people that are at the top of the totem pole, mm-hmm. yeah. but you don't know that it took them 20, 25 years to yeah. get there, yeah. 10, 15 years to get that way, and it's not, and you you have access to what they do now, so you see it, you see things happening mm-hmm. for them just like that, and you think that's going to pop off for you like that it, it doesn't happen that way yeah. so we let that we let that affect us and yeah I, and i feel like the expectations and it's beautiful to have expectations for yourself but the expectations that we have for ourselves that we feel like we have to attain these things instantaneously like damn um i'm 29 and my life's not where i thought it would be at when yeah. i planned with what i had planned for 29 so that affects um happiness in, in a state in my state of mind from right there right but 
taking a step back, allowing myself to have life experiences, life does not go as you plan it to go. Mm -hmm. It just goes. It goes. What's that saying? Uh, you want to mm -hmm. make God laugh, plan out? What is it? Yeah, tell him your plans. Your plan. Tell him your yeah. plans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, mean, I mean, you can still have plans. You can still work towards what you want. But just be aware that there are bumps and bruises that do come yeah. along with mm -hmm. this. And definitely just don't, you know, let them knock you. Yeah, they'll not, don't let them knock you down. You don't want to intentionally get knocked down. But if you get knocked down, just, you know, work your way, stand back up. But that's the process of becoming that we had alluded to several episodes ago. That's what you learn most about yourself. And that's what you end up falling in love with is the whole process, the process. of getting to that particular goal or plan that you had laid out. Right. And once you get there, the accolades or the achievement is just a result of your persistence and your hard work and dedication mm -hmm. to your purpose. Um, as far as like hope versus joy, you know, yeah, they go hand in hand. But as far as hope goes, it's I'm happy. What's say hope and joy? I meant happy and joy. It's like a mindset. But again, let's set up realistic expectations. It's like you can try and wake up and be as positive as you want. But you got, you know, understand that there's, to have one, there's another. Like to understand or appreciate happiness, you have you have to go through sadness and all those other emotions and whatnot. So don't block those out, Joe. Cry if you have to. Nah, <laughs> nah. That goes back to it goes back to a, a, a quote that I posted not well actually a while back, um, where it said, "What grieve if you must, yes. yeah. so that you're free to feel something else." Yes. Yeah. Again, just as far as joy goes, you you want to find out. Like, what are you a part of? You know, are you a part of something that's bigger than you in order to bring you that joy? Because once you figure that out and once you discover that, you're going to look forward to it and it's going to bring you happiness. It's going to allow you to laugh and you build relationships. Mm -hmm. Relationships help you with that whole joy aspect of it. We're not meant to walk this earth by ourselves. Right. We're not meant to be self-made in an essence where I don't need anybody's help. Mm -hmm. Right. In order to have a platform, you have to have people supporting you, yeah, that's right? True. Re regardless that's true. of what industry you are in. Um, so build relationships, meaningful relationships, and understanding that people do come and go um, and that you do outgrow one another. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't keep in contact or that you don't eventually uh, reach out to one another down the road. Right. Um, but it's one of those things where, as cliche as it is, is, we do so many things that we try to fit in when we're actually genetically coded and designed to stand out. Mm. And that's why we're all different. My mama told me I was unique. <laughs> oh God, you special baby. Yeah. They all tell, yeah. So they why, are we trying to, why, why are we trying to fit in so bad by going through social media and comparing ourselves with all these other successful people that we want to be like when we can, we can make it our own. Cause I think we find commonalities with other people and we're like, Okay, yeah, I'm unique. I like this thing. You like this thing. So I'm going to try to mold in and fit in yeah. with you so I can, you know, I have people that are in, you know, interested in the same things that I am. So I think that's where the fitting in, you know. But that's building a from. tribe. And so, like, in order to stand out, you have to know what you stand for. There you go. Yeah. I forgot why I read that, but it stuck with me. Mm -hmm. And in order to discover what you stand for, you got to allow yourself to experience those things, right? right? Mm -hmm. But what do I know? You know a lot. What? Come on, man. Give yourself some some credit. Give yourself some credit on some you know some things from right there. Did we answer this young man's question? I don't know. He's listening. So. That was. I mean, that was pretty. Like that was a good question. Yeah. Like I was I, honestly when he like I said when he presented it, I I didn't know how I was gonna answer it. Yeah. I didn't know how I was gonna answer that. I had to dwell on it for. for that was a. That was a. That was, that, deep, was, that was the thought thought yeah. provoking question or topic. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it made me take a step back and I was like, damn, damn how, would I, and how would I answer this? Right. Mm. Like I haven't even thought about this for a while. Right. You know? Yeah. It's like, happiness, man. you know, circumstantial, you'll be happy at periods of time in your life. You'll be sad during periods of time in your life. The thing is when you are sad, um, don't beat yourself up for being sad. Yeah. Mm. Like don't, don't take yourself down, you know, down a path that you don't need to go down. Yeah. Don't be sad about being sad. Like, Oh, I shouldn't feel this way. No, I feel that way. Let that shit go. Fill mm -hmm. it. And, and like you said, you look, I'm preaching to the choir. Fill it and move past it. But I just hate it. Because I like crying. It's I, not fun. I, I hate crying. Crying sucks. Yeah. Like that is just, it's just, oh, Even shit. physically, like you get Physic all stopped up. Oh. No. Teary-eyed <laughs> shit. You know. 
I used to try to fake cry before I got my ass whooped. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned, motherfuckers. You don't need to beat me. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I'm over, one time, okay, so I was like 12 years old in seventh grade, right? And my uncle, so the, um, I moved in with my uncle, who is my mom's brother. I was in seventh grade. Um, first time I got an ass open from him was the summer of 2002, and I remember it. I remember it was yeah, a hot Texas. Day? Hell fucking yeah. Okay, so he had uh, he had a Lexus, okay? He listened to gospel music out the ass, and I was like, fuck this shit. Me and my mama listened to rap. So, <laughs> so he went into AutoZone. I remember it was in Carrollton. He went to AutoZone in Carrollton. And when he went in, he had, like, Kirk Franklin playing or some shit. I was like, man, turn this shit off. I put it on K104. And what I didn't know is when you put it on the radio, the uh, antenna in the back of the car would come up to oh. catch the signal. So when when I think he would be coming, I would put and change it back to gospel. So you think I'm changing it to gospel. So it would go up and down, up and down, up and down. So he get back in the car. He like, you listening to the radio? I was like, nah. He was like, you're lying. Because every time you change it to the radio, the antenna go up. You know what? I'm going to have to whoop your ass. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Bruh, I ain't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening to the radio. Don't spank me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, we get to the we. So we have to travel when we're going to a storage facility. We go to a storage facility. Um, one of those ones in Carrollton. So he, um, you know, I'm seventh grade. I'm like five foot two. He has me like climbing over boxes looking for shit. So uh, I'm grab on a box and the box falls down. He said, "You see what happens when you start lying." <laughs> 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 He's like, shit start falling around. So shit start falling shit. apart around you. And we'll be ass when we get home. I'm like, God damn, I'm finna get an ass. We've only been down here a month. So uh, we get to the house. And so what I used to do before my mom would spank me is I would intentionally leave my bedroom door open. And I would run to my bed and be like, hey, yo, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yo, Jesus. Like, for real. Hey, this your boy Joe. You know me. <laughs> Say, man, I'm finna get a whooping. I don't want to get a whoop. And my mom told me later on in life she would see me praying and she oh. wouldn't spank me. Now she did it a couple of times. So I went to the house and I, I was like, man, this worked with my mama. And I, pff, baby, Brain I'm work. Jesus. Like, it's going to work for my uncle. So I go, hey, hey yo, Jesus, it's your boy Joe. <laughs> and my uncle Fess. You remember said, me? You remember me yesterday? He finna, <laughs> my uncle said he finna whip my ass. I don't really like that right now. You know what I'm saying? I don't need that in my life. You know, I'm, I'm new down here. First time living away from my mom. I ain't, he was listening to gospel. Yeah, he was listening to your music, Lord. But straight up, I just want to hear some juvenile or something. <laughs> I like the beats. So, he, so I get done praying, and he comes and he said, you ready to get your ass yeah. <laughs> I said, what the, what? Come on, man. Like, I waited and for you. It wasn't, it wasn't a bell, so he was in a fraternity, so he had paddles. Oh, and so, he said, it gets he said, better. Bend over. I said, yeah. bend over. <laughs> Whooping is this? No, excuse my language. We have to bleep that out. Oh my god! What kind of whooping is this? And boy, he put that paddle to my ass, and I was like, "Yo, nah, whatever that is, I don't want it no Man, my, more." My dad would just grab whatever he could grab. Whatever he could grab, like whatever chopsticks, <laughs> belt, <laughs> chopsticks. Those for the for. Hey, the, the Asians, the Asians don't know what I'm talking about. The little um, it's like a little broom, like with a bunch of feathers at the end. It's like a little. It's like a twitch. What what do you what does he do with but chopsticks? It, but like it got pop to, your hand or yeah yeah like hold your hand out you know oh man but God. see I, I, I learned I learned I learned Ooh. because when my dad just grabbed like a couple chopsticks like on the counter or something yeah man a couple chopsticks hurt worse than like a stack yeah so when I know I'm about to get in trouble and he's gonna look for something I just run to the kitchen <laughs> grab a stack of chopsticks just hand to a guy I know I'm I know I know I'm gonna get in trouble regardless. So let me go ahead and determine how how much it hurts. Oh my gosh! You ever defend well, Griff? You ever defend yourself from an ass whooping? You end up with like like all kinds of marks oh, in your arm and stuff oh because you're trying to God. defend yourself. Oh my God! My uncle, <laughs> my uncle, once again, twelve years old. So he oh, he was man. about to whoop my ass again in seventh grade. So I used to have to get my planner signed by my teacher just to make sure you know shit was straight at school all day. And that day she wrote something bad in there, so I ripped that bitch out. <laughs> You finna get me in trouble. You know, I get fucked up at the house. Like, he can't see this. And so I tear it out. And he, he pulls the planner out and he's looking in the back. You know, he's looking at it. He's like, where's this piece at? And I'm like, ah, oh, uh, I don't know. Like, let me go look at my backpack. It's a missing so page. I'm like, you know how you look as a kid for shit and you know what you did with it. You like rifling through, like, you're scratching your head. <laughs> oh, man. I really don't know. So he was like, you know what? Go ahead and prepare for this ass whooping. <laughs> So I had the shower running, right? So I went back in the room and I grabbed every pair of underwear that I owned and, and put I, it on. I wrapped it up in the towel and I went back to the bathroom and I slid them bitches on. 
every single stack, and I pulled my oh, shorts man. back over, and he came. I came back out. <coughs> Paddle right there. Oh he paddled my, my ass, and I had to make myself cry because it didn't hurt because my ass was padded. <laughs> so I get back in the bathroom, uh, and I'm like, "Hey, fuck you!" <laughs> I close my eyes and I'm like, "Fuck you, fuck you." That ain't hurt. <laughs> I'm talking so much shit. But that's the anticipation oh is worse. God. Like uh, the build up to the ass whooping. Yeah, because yeah. I'd be at home and mom, mom would be like, "Wait till your dad gets home." Oh, see, I didn't have that oh, issue because I didn't have a dad. No, it'd be like one of those like, "Dang, what can what can you just whoop me?" Like, why yeah, I gotta ooh. wait for dad to come home? Y'all missed that. Like, I know, I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like growing up with a dad in your households? Because both of you had your fathers. What was that? What was that like? No, my dad wasn't in the house. Your dad wasn't in the house, but you had contact with him. Yeah, like frequent contact. Ooh. Yeah. Well, now, I didn't like. I remember. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling some stories. <laughs> my mom and I were driving down the street in Park Hill. True story. So we're driving down the street. <laughs> we see my dad. He takes off running into a house that, like, he didn't live with us. <laughs> he comes back out the front door. I swear on everything. He's like this. What the fuck? terrible. Oh, my God. Funny, but not funny. Oh, I'm God. like, what the hell? <laughs> oh, it's hot. Why is sound like this? It's like, why are you so angry? Oh, I'm like, why is he, why is he flipping? Like, in my, in my head, oh, honestly, as a kid, at that point, he hadn't, like, been there in my life yeah. for a long period of time. So, like, I wasn't mad. In my head, I was laughing. But I didn't, want, I didn't know if it was appropriate to laugh. I was like, yo, this dude is funny. Like, like, so he came out and he flipped us off. And so that's why I was like, so what was it like? You know, you're, you know, you were the, with your dad often. You, your father was in your life yeah. the entire time. What what was that like? What lessons, uh, like, how, how did that shape and mold you as a man? Shit, two whoopings is worse than one whooping. Yeah. Mm. You know, uh, Ooh, mom had, and dad. I've had plenty of situations to where, like, I would do something, get in trouble in school, and my dad is the one picking me up. So the teacher would tell my pops, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So now I got to deal with my pops. This long ass drive home is like 15 mm -hmm. minutes, but it felt like three hours. Yeah. Right? Got to listen to this That's fucking quiet. boring ass lecture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shit that you done heard already. Already. Right? And you don't want to give them attitude because they smack you in the mouth. Yeah. Oh. You said, Ooh. You're one of them. You start tearing up. Your eyes start yeah, watering. And you and taste shit. it, it too. Taste, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know you got to deal with that, and then you get home. Yeah, your dad told me about uh -huh. what the teacher said. So you know what's like. Fuck, I gotta yeah. get get my ass. Now I get again. in trouble, with Mama. So it, it, fuck. But, but it, it, it shapes the shit out of you. Yeah, it does. Two ass whoopings. Two ass whoopings. Shit. Thanks, Dad. Yeah, <laughs> I only structure. got one. Damn. <laughs> I, I remember. Okay, it got to the point where my sister and I were getting too old. To get whoopings from get your whoopings. mom or from both, yeah. Mm. So this is what they do. So um, they make us go kneel in front of the altar, like like, and have our arms out like this. Let like them get minute. crucified Wait like Jesus. Minute. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> they're Ooh. like they're like kneel, pray. Ooh. <laughs> you need some Jesus in your life. And I'm like, okay, this, man, how hard could this beat? You're like, oh, this this definitely beats a getting beat by chopsticks and whatever else. <laughs> Nah, man, you try holding your arms out for like 20, 30 minutes, it'll be 20, 30 minutes. I'm over here thinking, man, for like five minutes, I can do this. Boy, I'm over here like, I, especially when me and my sister get into a fight and we both get in trouble, I'm watching my sister and she's all like, <laughs> shoulders burning. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm fine, you know? But two minutes later, I'm like doing the same thing she is. Like, so you try to put your arm down, and the more my, more my parents, because my parents can see us from the kitchen. And you see the arms come down, like, keep your arms up. Y'all had an altar in the house? Yeah, we're Catholic. Oh, so we had, like, an altar of, you know, Jesus, oh, Mary, and all that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yo, punishment story, like, kid, like as kids, you know, you get in trouble. Like, the stories, I love hearing those stories. Yeah. They are so fucking hilarious. But it's not like just that. So our, our shoulders are burning, but then we're kneeling on, oh, on rough man. carpet. Oh, so knees start hurting, too. So at one point, we're over here, like, moving our knees and shoulders and... Then my sister and I started learning from each other. It's like, hey, I'm going to hold your arm up on this side. You hold my arm up. We'll rotate. You know like, <laughs> I got you. You get me, all right? You know? <laughs> They're fighting and now you best friends helping each other out. Yeah. That's how you teach teamwork, man. Oh. Holy shit, bro. Oh, my gosh. Oh, these stories are great. Oh, my goodness, I, so, man. I'm, so with my kids, right, I don't, I don't whoop my kids, right? That's one thing. I'm like, you know what? I got my ass whooped as a kid. I don't, don't want to. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, much. you try and change it up. You try to switch it up a little bit. So I use wall sits. Yeah. Right? Oh. My daughters, they learn once. 
they don't know I ain't fucking with the wall sits. Yeah. My son, nah, he like, fuck, I hit these wall sits. He, he wall sitting all the time. But the funny thing, and I know I shouldn't laugh, but I laugh, right? He in this wall sit, 30 seconds into it. The tears. Lay start shaking. The tears start, he start shaking. Yeah. He start to drop his butt. Nope, get your butt up. Get your butt up. I'll just stand right there, right in front of him. He yeah. can't cheat, right? I don't care what I'm doing. If I'm doing something, if I'm working, programming, or something like that, I'm right, I'm right there in front of him, just watching him programming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he's just looking at me, he's fucking. You know, all the shaking and shit. <laughs> face turned red. <laughs> you know, and kids cry when they cry, cry. It's fucking hilarious to me. Yeah, because I feel like the most terrible parent when kids cry, cry. Even if it's not my kid, I see somebody else's kid cry <laughs> like that. That that like soul wrenching, just <laughs> shaking and like tears gasping for air. Yeah, yeah, all that shit. I laugh, bro. It is the funniest shit to me. So when my son is sitting on that wall, boy. And he starts shaking, he starts sliding down, his legs start shaking and shit, you know, and I have him with his arms out too, so he's just... Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Sick and lower and lower, bro. I laugh, man. Oh. There's been times I would have to leave the room to laugh, and I'll call his mom and be like, yo, I wish you could see your son right now. <laughs> and she be laughing because she knows. <laughs> she knows what it looks like. Because oh, that's how we, you know, we don't... We don't like to put our hands on but, it, but you, so you hear the stories and you, you heard you heard how you hear like how we grew up, yeah, and how you know kids are disciplined now and, and it's different culture, like it's yeah. different culturally, yeah. So so like when you hear like a white kid cuss at his mom, shut up, you stupid bitch, and I'm like, I wish a motherfucker. Wait, nah, I ain't gonna wait, lie. I like, was probably one of the few black kids. I, I popped off a few ooh. curse words as a and kid, and you got away with it. But not calling my mom a bitch. No, I've heard like, like I'm, I'm, I'm like, over here up. like, oh. fuck you, Linda. Looking like, at him in the face. Yeah, calling him by the I'm first name. I'm like, boy, if that was me, like, you want me to whoop his ass for you? I don't feel like, like that's an unfair stereotype because like, I went to a, a classmate's house one time to work on a project, and he lived with his uncle, and aunt, you know, by coincidence, and he said some fuck yous and shit like that, and I was like, and we were in high school, and I was like, bro, like you gotta relax, like. Chill out. Yeah. Like, I, nah. I'm like, oh, like, I don't do that. I don't do that at my house. And I feel wrong as a teenager. I'm 14, 15 years old. Just watching here right. with you in your house and you talking to your aunt and them like that. And I live with my aunt and uncle mm -hmm. and I know how much you know reverence and respect I have for yeah, the both yeah. of them. I can't I, bro, I can't accept that. I and can't it's like accept how they that. get away with that. Cause yeah. if that was my ass in my home right. and I said something like that. That's some weird shit, though. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have even gotten to finish the next word. I would, I would have had the hand prints across my face. Some comedian talked about that shit. Like, you playing video games, and you're with your white friend, and the mom says something, and, you know, the white kid goes off, and you're playing the video game, and shit just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oh, we. I think it was Dave Chappelle oh talking about that. Oh, my God, That, that shit is fucking hilarious, man. That, just to clarify, since we're in a uh, sensitive world now, we're not trying to be racist or nothing. We're just... Oh, come just, on. We're just pointing out. If you get a... I'm sorry. All right, <laughs> I'm, I'm just sure. saying. I'm going to show Hey, some people get mad. Like, right. oh, why they got to be so racist? You're right. Nah, like, nah, we're not trying to be racist. We're trying right. to point out the cultural differences. It's some nah. sensitive motherfuckers out there. No, nah, we're not catering to them. Forget that. <laughs> I'm a 90s baby dog. I got told suck it to me in elementary school. The suck it sign? Like, nah, I'm not catering to y'all. I'm not apologizing to y'all. Well, I think y'all had a girlfriend in, in sixth grade. I told my dad I had a girlfriend in sixth grade. What's wrong with that? No, I told my dad. He was like, yeah, what's up with you? Wait, you, you wasn't allowed to have no girlfriend? Not I think that's when I got my I, first I condom. <laughs> I, me too. I kept it in my shoe. Kept it in my though. wallet. Yeah. <laughs> I probably still got that condom never, in that old wallet somewhere. I never used it, though. Man, like, my dad was all about six year old condom. school work. It was all school work. I got, I got some stories for y'all asking we used about. to play. We used to play tag where I was like, hey, you going to call me? Call let it ring and then hang up. Yeah. So I know I'm calling so you I back. Know, yeah. Yeah. You got to play them games. This is before the pagers time. We page each other. It's just. <laughs> what is. The, what? Oh, shit, dude. A lot of people do that, man. From call, back in the day. You call. call let, hang, hang up. up. Let it so, ring twice. Let it ring twice. And then hang up. Once or twice and then hang up. And it's like a, a sign for you to call them back. Because yeah. you know the call idea pick up after two ring or three rings. Right? So you don't want your moms to know who calling. Right? So you hear that phone ring twice. And it don't ring no more. You know, I am calling. Call, that's my shorty calling me back. But your parents were home. Yeah. But you didn't want them to know. Didn't want them to know. Yeah. Because I wasn't allowed to have a girlfriend. But at the same time, they would still know. They all they gotta do is pick up the phone and listen to your conversation. I know. This it's, happened a couple times. Right? I mean, you, know, you, don't, you don't answer the phone. You call after it rings. Yeah. So they don't know you on the phone. Right. You just gotta go to another room. I right. used to pick up the phone and like slick it and hit mute and listen to my mom's conversations. <laughs> oh, Adult as fuck. 
Oh, I'll be in there listening. Like, God damn. What the fuck? Like, listen, I knew all the business. <laughs> <laughs> and I would slide that bitch down slowly and play, ooh, ooh, ooh juicy. You fuck up and go to the kitchen uh, and be like, hey, mom, uh, so how's how's Miss Smith doing? I heard she had AIDS. I don't, what oh, a where minute. did you hear that from? Oh, uh. At, uh bro, I heard, I heard so much stuff as a young child, but, you know, I never mentioned any of it. And, and save my ass and yeah. go from right there. All right, gents. That's all. <laughs> we went from happy joy to reliving our childhood. And we seem happy as about shit to say, talking yeah, about. Brought back, brought back bad, some memories. Brought man. back some memories. Hey, we appreciate you guys out there listening to us. This will be out on Monday, so happy Monday morning to you. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whichever day you listen to us. If you us. got any funny stories about discipline please, as a child, please let, let us know. know. Like, if you're about to drop some heavy, serious questions on us, please bring them to us. But, like, we really we really have to think about that one, and, you know, we like yeah, it. You know, we like in, that. Let us, yeah, let us know what makes you happy, what you think joy is and whatnot. Um, we would love to... To get everybody's perspective. That's yes, what this whole indeed. thing's about. It's a conversation. It's perspective. Yeah. I just uh, want to give a couple shout outs. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> shout out to True Brand. Yeah. Uh, you got on. Shout out to Center over off in Dallas, off of Mock and Berlin. Shout out to the Wise Up Apparel. Um, what's your homie that made your sweatshirt for the last episode? Oh, uh, OK Bodies, Bryant, hit him up. Transcenders, yep. yay. Keep a Tommy. There you go. There's so many, so much, so much talent around here in DFW. Yeah. Let us know. We'll tag him. We'll send you. Let us, we're, we're a plug. We yeah. are. Yeah. We know yeah. a lot of people around here that help us out and support us. Absolutely. Um, it's not about us knowing people. It's just the people that support us. Yeah. And so, you know, we may have a good contact for you in case yeah. there's something that you need. Yeah. Like say, Shout out by, your resources. Shout out by way of Dallas as well. I got something coming in from uh, them. Hans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I went and looked them up today yeah. and, and followed them on Instagram today. Oh my God. Um, really, if, you, if you're plugged into the Dallas area scene, please reach out to us, especially if you have apparel and, and it's cool. Like, we want to wear it. We yeah. want to represent the city. We yep. love y'all. We appreciate y'all. Pete, close us out. Close us out. Hey, real quick, ladies and gentlemen, I know it's been a rough year for a lot of folks, if not everybody. But keep in mind, whether you're happy, or joy, you got to understand there's one way, there's not, not one without the other. So embrace it. Every year is promised to have these ups and downs. But I remember something that someone once told me. If you have health, you have hope. And if you have hope, you have everything. Mm. So again, from the bottom of our heart, really appreciate the support. Continue tuning in to us. Let us know your questions, perspective. We look forward to hearing from you. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, you're here with my boy Joe, my boy Griff. I'm Peter. And do not forget to be brave with your life.